So it made it so that money couldn't go into religious schools. Um, last year there was a move to repeal the Blaine Amendment, and what they were doing is they were repealing the Blaine Amendment because it's a hindrance to a school voucher program, which um, is what they really want. Um, but right now there's no, um, there's no chance of it. Okay. Um, let's see, back there and then I'll come to up here, how's that? Oh, me. You, finally! She's like putting her purse on, she's like, I'm out of here. This guy. Um, do you think the two bills, someone banning conversion therapy and not discriminating against gender identity, are actually going to get passed and we're actually going to be somewhat progressive finally? So the question was updating the Human Rights Act and the um, conversion therapy bills that were both introduced yesterday. Yes. Uh, those are, um, the uh, as the words bill has been, we've been told that we will not receive any public hearing on it, there will be no conversation on it this year, and the Conversion therapy bill is a protest bill that is designed to make a real intentional point that that's some pretty unethical practices, and so its path forward is dim. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I'm really curious. We're here in a college town, and yet uh, in this audience I don't see that many people under 30. So I... Um, in part, I think that might be because, uh, in general, the Democratic Party is maybe not liberal enough for a lot of the younger people. And I'm curious what you guys see in your experience uh, in the legislature. Um, my experience is that that's not the problem. Um, no. Um, however, there is an infrastructure problem in the Democratic Party. Um, but it doesn't have to do with ideology. The reason it doesn't have to do with ideology is because if we're really a true party, there should be room for all different types of thought, right? However, there's an upward mobility problem and there's an accessibility problem within most county parties. No offense to the Laytaw County Party and no offense to the Ada County Party, which is the one that I'm a part of. However, um, when a young person comes into the party, the um, path forward seems blocked by the next generation and there are very, very few that I know of across this state significant plans to transfer power to the next generation. And so what has happened is folks have held on to seats, central committee seats, precinct seats for a very, very long time, and that new energy comes in and goes, well, I'm here, I don't really have any influence, and they walk. So my criticism of county parties is that you need to be thinking about your generational plans, because I do not think that has been thought through very well. And that isn't to say to my generational allies that anybody needs to go, but that there needs to be a conversation for how do you bring in new blood and allow them real significant uh, roles within the party, become the face of the party. And unfortunately, between C. Sandris and me, there's been a lot of folks that have come through, but if you look at the overall age of the county parties, they're mostly leaning towards cease and not me. <laughs> and I don't, and I'm not, so those of you that are in here going, that son of a mother. <laughs> I'm not criticizing in a way, I'm just saying that I'm not criticizing, that's just the way it is, but an intentional change needs to be made if you're planning to invest in the next generation. So it is an ideology, but it is an accessibility issue. And um, if you need to punch me, um, I'll be out on the deck. <laughs> we got a question up here. Uh, sir, a little earlier the question was asked, how do you help people move from voting against their own self-interest? You also commented on a gas tax and increasing the gas tax and expressed an idea that you support the idea of increasing the gas on the first, I think we need to ask ourselves, how do the positions we push affect those that we want to reconsider what's in their own best interest? Right. The gas tax is a very regressive tax. No, it's not. It is. The impact that it has on somebody working for minimum wage who has to drive the same distance to get to work compared to the impact it has on somebody making 200, 500,000 a year who has to have that same distance, or drive that same distance, is very dramatic. 
how do you justify supporting increasing the gas tax in that situation? Right. I'll let Representative Irving, because he's on the revenue tax, so it's perfect for him to respond to this. Sweet. <laughs> I mean, you raise the great political question of it's not black and white, right? To say that I support the gas tax, knowing that it's a regressive, knowing that it's a regressive tax, is a difficult thing to say, right? At the same time, I I guess what my real support is is I support finding the most fair way possible to all people to make sure that we invest in our infrastructure. I don't support investing in the infrastructure at the expense of our education system. And so when we start looking at how you pay for all of these things, um, the overarching solution that I keep coming back to is in Idaho, we have the most unfair income tax system I've ever seen. We call it a progressive income tax system, but if you make less than minimum wage, you pay the highest income tax rate in the entire, of, of all the brackets. So at $10,000 of income, pretty much, you're gonna pay 7.4% on your income tax. What my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are doing is they're saying, boy, 7.4, that's just too high. We've gotta give every Idahoan a break. We've gotta lower it from 7.4 to 7.2, which basically means millionaires are gonna make buco bucks. But those of us that have a taxable income of 25,000, when it's all said and done, we take our homeowner's exemption, we got a couple of kids and all this, we got $25,000 taxable income, we're going to make like 40 cents a week on that type of a tax cut. So to answer your question, we have to fund our infrastructure, we have to fund our education system. It needs to be fair, as fair as possible. And my idea of fairness is those who have the least should be spared a little bit. And we should have a progressive income tax system that's fair to all of the different wage earners in Idaho. That said, if we could get that in place, my phone's yelling at me. If we could get that in place, I still think that there needs to be a conversation around the gas tax. And there will always be a conversation around the gas tax. When we have this many lane miles in a state of 1.5 million people, it's going to cost us more than it costs Oregon to keep their roads up. Um, and then the question becomes, is that what we want to do? And if the answer is no, then it is what it is. But uh, you ask a brilliant question. I don't have a direct answer. And it's not an issue of justification. It's really an issue of this is some really complex issues. And I don't think there's one simple solution. And I think you're right in your argument that it harms those that have the least.